There's over three million shipwrecks underwater. And that's just incredible when you think about the stories and the people's lives and the histories and everything that are on those ships. It's interesting when you, when we, we only look really for valuable shipwrecks. And uh, for us, value is, to, is defined as gold or silver on a shipwreck. Um, and when you think about it, how do you get a shipwreck with a, a billion dollars or $500 million worth of coins? Well, it's interesting because if I want to buy a military aircraft or a ship or a gun today and I'm a government, I just wire the money. Uh, years ago, if you wanted to buy anything, you had to put it on a ship and ship it because there was no other way to get the funds to pay for things. And sometimes these ships never made it and so wars never happened or people changed sides because history defined that if you didn't get the money, uh, you, you, you cheated me. And so it's really amazing to go back and, and see how, how this, this has changed people's lives so, so much. But in any event, if you take $250,000 and for 200 years with inflation, it's four or five hundred million dollars. And, uh, and this was put on, any time you had international commerce, uh, these, these amounts of funds were put on ships and shipped. And they didn't have any way to really determine the weather. And they would get stopped by hurricanes, uh, pirates. They would hit, a gro you know, hit ground. Uh, because the maps were bad or, or shoals would move and uh, we find all these things. Sometimes we've even rewritten history because there was a ship we found called the Victory. We called Admiral Bolchin's Victory and um, Bolchin was on his, his last ship cruise uh, taking, um, taking on some uh, valuables from Portugal. We think about a billion dollars is, is what uh, the press has said it's worth. And um, his last cruise, they think that he had a big party, got drunk, and ran the ship aground. And so this was the largest ship in the British Navy at the time. It had 100 cannon. These were four-ton cannon. And so this was like an aircraft carrier of the time. And to think that um, you'd run that ship aground is so much embarrassment to the British Navy and to the family. And, um, and it, it was really a sad thing. And so we went out and we looked and we looked and we couldn't find it. And we started looking in other places and we found it in very deep water. And uh, he didn't run it aground. In fact, um, what had happened is the keel was undersized for the weight of the cannon. And in a storm, the cannon shifted from one side to the other and the ship flipped over. And it had nothing to do with with Bolchin being a bad uh, captain of the ship. So we rewrote history and uh, his family name now is, is looked upon greatly in Britain. And in fact, one of his, his descendants just uh, went in the House of Lords. And so we rewrote the history of the British Navy. We rewrote history of the designer of the keel. We rewrote history in who is an elected official now. And that's exciting when you can do that. We found this shipwreck that was 15,000 feet underwater. And what happened is there was 48 tons of silver on the ship. And the ship was so heavy that it was running out of fuel and wasn't going to make the port. So it had to slow down. And of course, as soon as it slowed down, the U-boats knocked it off immediately, off of Cork, Ireland. So we say, OK, well, you know, we know from the German data that it's here. So uh, we found the ship. But Again, we had to invent all kinds of equipment uh, to, in order to, to open up this. This was a steel hull ship. And at 15,000 feet, to go in, and we had to literally use like a can opener to open this up and pull it apart deck by deck and, uh, until we could get into where we thought the silver would have been. And we brought up the first silver bar. It's yellow. And we go, is this silver? Maybe it's not silver, it's got a yellow tinge to it. And so you can imagine, we're all excited because at 15,000 feet, it looks like a silver bar and we bring it up and it's this ugly looking yellow thing. Not gold, it's just kind of murky looking. And um, so we test it 
it looks like silver, but silver's not yellow. So we think, well, maybe there was arsenic or something in it. Maybe there's a, a chemical in it. And so um, what we found out is that um, there wasn't enough time to finish refining these bars because the ship was sailing on Tuesday and anything that wasn't loaded wasn't going. So what they did is they didn't have time to get, there was uh, impurity in there. The impurity was gold. So we, <laughs> we made another couple million dollars in gold. So that's, that's a good problem. Our biggest loss was we went out and found this project and it was in the middle of the ocean right outside of Portugal and it was a ship that um, had left South America and it was an old military ship that a private person had had taken over and had taken off the gun decks off the ship and had put cabins for families women and children and people that went to the new world um, you know, it really wasn't a great place to live back then, and they wanted to get their families back, have their kids have proper education, take the wealth that they found, and so this ship was coming back. Uh, Spain said it was the Mercedes, and we go, well, we don't know because there's no cannon on the ship, there, there's no armaments, um, there's a Mercedes, it used to be a military ship, but it was bought by private people, so that's great news for us. And um, in fact, what they said is it was a military ship on a military mission, and these coins that were found, there's no ship, there were no cannon, but just a bunch of coins, 600,000 coins worth, the press says, just under $700 million. And Spain said, ah, it's a military ship on a military mission, so that automatically makes it sovereign property of the country. The coins were more, probably about 70-some percent of it were privately owned, and uh, none of, it was all Chilean and South American coins that had never ever been to Spain. And Spain said, it's ours and we're gonna take it. And not only did we lose the coins, but they made us pay all of their legal costs and didn't pay us a nickel for bringing it up and handing it to them. So a big loss. But in big losses are big successes and that's what we learned. And what happened is we said, well, this model isn't working so well with us. And so we then uh, repositioned the company into an underwater mining company. We know so little about the seas. It's amazing because they've been with us forever. And yet we know more about the moon probably than we know about underwater. And um, the opportunities are just amazing. For example, we brought up some bacteria from one of our wrecks and it seems that it's a new antibiotic, antibiotic that we can use. It isn't resistant because it's been underwater for all these years. So we put it on all of these germs that no, nothing can kill, and it kills it. And so we may find the next cure for some disease or uh, save someone's life because of that. Uh, we're finding all of these minerals underwater, and uh, we can bring them up very affordably, cheaper than on land, and, uh, and with less damage to the environment. And, uh, and of course, there's the shipwreck business where we're always looking for our next, next real treasure.